वन हैज टू रिमेंबर द मोस्ट कॉमन सिलिकेट्स प्रेजेंट इन ग्लास आर पोटेशियम कैल्शियम और लेड सिलिकेट्स दिस यू हैव टू रिमेंबर सो वी कैन से ग्लास इज बेसिकली सुपर कूल लिक्विड ओके ऑफ द सिलिकेट्स एंड बोरेट्स डिपेंडिंग ऑन द अमाउंट ऑफ पोटेशियम कैल्शियम एंड सिलिकेट्स प्रेजेंट द ग्लास इज एट्रीब्यूटेड अ वेरी डिफरेंट प्रॉपर्टीज ओके वन हैज टू रिमेंबर द चीफ कंपोनेंट दैट इज सुपर कूल लिक्विड इज यूज हियर दिस वर्ड इज वेरी स्पेसिफिक वेन वी डिफाइन द ग्लास coming to the characteristics of the glass now what should be the role of this glass and what should be the characteristics that will be looking this glass should be you can say it is a hard but brittle material it means on looking it appears hard but if it fall down it is going to break easily that's why it is given hard and brittle material title you can say here the glass can be transparent or translucent it is fragile it means it is easy to break then you can say glass is chemically inert then we can say glass is amorphous or non crystalline solid solution okay this one has to remember then we can say glass can be recycled okay then you can say glass is easy to clean it is stable over a wide range of temperature depending on the components added to the glass it does not possess sharp melting point that this is very important glass is not having sharp melting point that is why it is a super cool liquid we can say like that it can be remolded into any shape so these all are basically you can say the characteristics of the glass we'll be moving ahead that is with the raw materials that are used for the glass formation you have sand or silica then you have soda or sodium carbonate you have potash you have limestone lead zinc borates culets these culets are the small glass pieces that are added in the glass process formation is during process this culet small glass pieces are also added you have basically glass manufacturing is going to involve the four steps first is melting second is forming and shaping third is annealing fourth is final finishing these are the four steps look at the glass manufacturing process given here you can see here there is different chambers okay gas air chamber is there hot gases chamber is there furnace tank is there then you have the hot flame temperature about 1800 degree celsius the mixture that is added you have soda ash limestone sand and culets mixture is basically added there okay now you can see what are the steps happening melting process that is the first step in the glass process formation look here what we take we take all the raw materials and we are heating it into the furnace about 1800 degree celsius that is s here shown in the diagram okay we are taking the raw materials heating in the furnace the second step when all carbon dioxide is escaped okay then what happens you are adding decolorizers like manganese dioxide or you are adding the why you are adding this decolorizers basically to remove the ferrous compounds and carbon components so when all carbon dioxide is eliminated or you can say escaped then only decolorizers are added later on what happens in the next step if you if you want the colored glass then you are adding coloring salts to this a uh, particular mixture now look here coloring salts are added to get colored glass and heating is continued till molten glass is free from bubbles then mixture cooled mixture is cooled to the temperature of about 800 degree celsius you can imagine the temperature drop that is we begin the heating of the raw material at 1800 degree celsius and then later on after doing all the processes we are dropping down temperature and mixture is cooled to about 800 degree celsius temperature now you can coming to the second phase that is forming and shaping process after cooling molten gas molten glass taken is given a desired shape by either blowing or molding or pressing between rollers this is the second step third step is annealing process glass articles are allowed to cool 
to room temperature by passing through a different chambers with decreasing temperature it means what the glass prepared okay after the forming process is basically taken to the different chambers in this different chambers what is there a uh, descending temperature zones are there so it means this glass is slowly cooled directly it is not given the cooling temperature so glass articles are basically allowed to cool to room temperature by passing through the different chambers with a decreasing temperatures longer is the annealing period better is the glass quality this is very important the chambers play very important role they help down they help glass to basically cool down at a different temperatures slowly so process is very slow so if longer is the annealing period better is the glass quality coming to the finishing process that is the final stage after annealing all glass materials are subjected to final finishing such as cleaning grinding polishing cutting process etc now coming to the different variety of the glasses that is in the ad will be taking up the first is soda lime glass what is there it is a soft glass basically formed by the mixture of sodium silicate and calcium silicate it is cheap it is transparent and melts at lower temperature it is used to make dishes bottles window glass etc so this is about the soda glass second type of glass that we are going to take is potash lime glass or it is called potash glass it is basically a hard glass made from the mixture of the potassium silicate and calcium silicate can withstand high temperature also unaffected by water and other chemicals then we have potash lead glass it is also called flint glass it melts easily possess more shine unaffected by water and solvents used to make prism electric bulb artificial gem etc this is about potash lead glass moving to the next type that is silica glass it consists of sio2 in the structure melting point of this glass is very high machine strength is less it is resistant to chemicals it is only affected by hydrogen fluoride borosilicate glass or you can have the pyrex glass another name now the how it is obtained by adding boron trioxide in soda lime glass glass is resistant to chemical attack and can withstand high temperature this glass are used to make a lab apparatus kitchen wares and insulation work because of the special property of withstanding the high temperature so you can carry out reactions in this type of the glasses aluminum silicate glass is again a very different it consists of very high amount of aluminum oxide and low amount of boron trioxide it has high softening temperature it is used to make high pressure and mercury discharge tubes then we have optical glass that is crooks glass it contains phosphorus and lead silicate it has low melting point it is capable of absorbing very harmful uv radiation also okay so it is used to make optical devices like lenses etc then we have safety glass and lem athwa you can say laminated glasses okay so it is having a different name of the safety glass or laminated glass how this is formed we have a thin layer of the cellulose acetate that is basically placed between the two sheets of the ordinary glass this is heated under pressure till both the layer merge into one another and this glass obtained is the final that is safety or laminated glass it is used in the automobile field and aeroplanes due to three layered protection the glasses when breaks does not shatter away and due to this more accidents can be avoided coming to the very important material now in the session that is refractories what are these refractories these are the materials which can withstand very high temperature without undergoing any change in the shape by virtue of their high melting point okay so these refractories are a special materials that can withstand very high temperature without undergoing any change in the shape because it can withstand very high temperatures 
because it has a very high melting point and due to this it is finding a various applications now looking to the characteristics of the good refractories you can see here a good refractory should not fuse at operating temperature its physical and mechanical properties should not change at high temperature it should be chemically inert okay this is very important then you can say it should withstand the temperature differences if like you are heating the refractories and you are changing the temperature suddenly then also it should be able to withstand the temperature changes so now the, you can say good refractory should be able to bear the load changes it means what whatever load is applied it should be able to withstand it contraction and expansion of refractory should not be sudden it should be uniform it means if it should not like that contraction is more and expansion is less so you have to take care while choosing the refractory its nature should be such that it should have a uniform contraction and expansion okay then we have its thermal and electrical conductivity should be low properties of the refractories the first point that is refractoriness it is ability of refractory material to withstand high temperature without undergoing softening or deformation under working condition it is very important property that defines the refractory second property that is strength it is basically the ability of refractory to withstand high temperature under influence of maximum load without breaking good refractory should have high mechanical strength under operating temperatures this is desirable property then we have thermal expansion good refractory basically if you say it should have a least thermal expansion in order to avoid the damages of the refractory fourth point porosity now what happens gases may enter the refractory due to porosity and may cause the reaction so good refractory should possess basically a moderate porosity then we have thermal conductivity you can say refractory should have low thermal conductivity and electrical conductivity of the refractory should also be low so you can say refractory materials can be used for lining electrical furnace okay because of the low electrical conductivity the next property that is seventh property desirable is chemical inertness very important the refractory material should not react chemically or it should not undergo corrosion chemical composition of the refractory play very important role in determining nature and character of the refractory you can say here now the classification of the refractories is made into three categories we'll be taking up the first category that is acidic refractory what are this acidic refractory let us have a look on it acidic refractories are the materials that are not attacked by acidic substances but they are attacked by basic substances this one has to remember for defining the acidic refractories you can look here in the examples also we have silica quartz kaolinite fire clay all these are basically the example of the acidic refractory so these acidic refractories are not attacked by acidic substance but they are attacked by the basic substances looking to the basic refractories the second category of the classification they are basically not attacked by basic substances but these basic refractories are attacked by the acidic refractories that one has to remember the examples chosen for this field are magnesite dolomite and alumina these are the example for the basic refractory you can see here neutral refractories these neutral refractories are basically not attacked by acidic and basic substances and that is why they are given the name neutral refractories you have the exam carbon and graphite now properties of the alumina okay alumina is a type of the refractory and what special properties it possesses let us take a look on it alumina bricks have very high porosity 
दे हैव हाई मिकैनिकल स्ट्रेंथ गुड हीट रेजिस्टेंस गुड थर्मल रेजिस्टेंस दे आर इनर्ट टूवर्ड्स गैसेस लाइक कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड हाइड्रोजन ऑक्सीडाइजिंग एंड रिड्यूसिंग एजेंट्स एक्सेट्रा ओके सो एल्यूमिना ब्रिक्स आर बेसिकली हैविंग गुड पोरोसिटी गुड मिकैनिकल स्ट्रेंथ गुड हीट एंड थर्मल रेजिस्टेंस एंड ऑल्सो गुड केमिकल इनर्टनेस then we have properties of the magnesia refractory we can see here magnesia is gray or dark brown in color it has good crushing strength it reacts with acid heat conductivity is low they show little shrinkage so these are the very important properties about magnesia refractory that one has to remember looking to the general applications of the refractory you can see very clearly refractories are very important for lining of the furnaces crucibles converters in making iron steel and non ferrous metals it is used to construct cement cleans as shown in the diagrams then you can have glass tanks steam boiler and paper plants etc special type of refractories are used in rockets and nuclear power plants this also are finding a very important applications because of withstanding the very high temperature coming to the just what topics we have covered that you all can see here very clearly in this session we have discussed the cement its constituents composition of the portland cement manufacturing of the portland cement setting and hardening of the cement glasses we have seen its variety application of the various glasses then refractory types we have described the cement in short as a material possessing adhesive cohesive property that is capable of bonding materials like stone bricks and other building blocks we have seen the constituents lime silica alumina calcium sulfate iron oxide magnesia sulfur alkalis each playing a very important role silica forming dicalcium tricalcium silicate and imparting special strength alumina is imparting a quick setting property to the cement calcium sulfate in the form of gypsum and increase the initial setting time of the cement iron oxide playing role to impart color hardness and strength to cement small amount of magnesia and high amount of magnesia changes the properties of the cement alkalis present in the higher amount chances of the aggregate formation increases then you can say the cement general properties should be uniform on the color look then it should be uh, 